If you've ever wanted a tricked out AK, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you've ever wanted a tricked out AK because of Escape from Tarkov, you win for today. Ladies, gentlemen, thank you for tuning into the channel today. The comment section is what makes this channel famous. If you're not sure what it is, go down there and see what they're arguing about. It's usually nothing pertinent to whatever the video is about. However, I'd highly recommend getting down there. They're among my favorite, my favorite and my, um, my greatest disappointment as well. Get in there and find out why it makes the channel great. If you are looking to support the channel, we have Big Daddy Unlimited. Big Daddy Unlimited is like the Costco of the gun world. You pay a subscription per month and you get super cheap gun parts and all those different stuff and guns and optics. Get in there, people are saving tons of money. Highly recommended. If you're looking for sick plaid and bags, we have Vertex and of course, LEX Ammunition for all your ammunition needs. Grand Thumb is the discount code, gives you 25% off on Vertex and I think like four or five percent on uh, LEX ammunition. Ladies, gentlemen, F-16s being transitioned out for F-35s. Welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about a very cool pistol, not a rifle, thank you ATF. We have the Rifle Dynamics RD704M pistol. Um, I will be SBRing this at some point in the future, but for now it is a pistol. Um, I wish that we didn't have to deal with these very arbitrary laws of the NFA and that type of thing, and I don't want to you know, get on a pedestal really quickly, but uh, work with local state legislators and uh, fight the fight. Laws like SPR laws are insane, so let's fight that. Now, before we get into this particular uh, weapon, let's talk a little bit about my relationship with Rifle Dynamics. So. Rifle Dynamics sent me this particular um, pistol to review, I want to say on the better part of almost a year ago at this point. Um, no ammunition was provided from them, no money from them or anything like that. Um, all the money, I mean, all the, <laughs> I guess the money, because I had to drive everywhere and shoot this and put my time and effort into it. But all the ammunition was provided for by me and by extension, LAX Ammunition, so we thank them for that. Um, a lot of the accessories that we have on here are from a variety of different manufacturers that we'll talk about at the end. But um, yeah, no exchange, of, no exchange of, of anything besides the rifle, which is fairly typical um, of the reviews that I was um, doing at that time when uh, companies had sent me rifles. So that is what we have. Um, besides that, I think that they're cool dudes. I think that Jim Fuller is a great guy. I think all the people that work there are great people. So I do like them um, and I do like this rifle as well. Full disclosure again. So. Um, Let's take a moment and let's talk a little bit about Rifle Dynamics and then specifically about this. Now, if you're not familiar with Rifle Dynamics, um, kind of the best way to describe them would be is probably one of the uh, most premier AK makers in the United States currently. So there are, of course, many AK manufacturers in the United States. Perhaps few that have been running as long as Rifle Dynamics have. There are, of course, a couple. And there are many other top tier AK manufacturers out there in smaller shops. So when you talk about rifle dynamics, the question always gets brought up, um, which is why? Why would I pay this much for a rifle? Because rifle dan or pistol, rifle dynamics um, AKs do cost quite a bit, 25, 2700, depending on the accessories that you're throwing on, probably even more. So why pay so much for it? It's, it's approaching the cost of very Gucci out ARs. So why, especially when it's fairly well known that in you know countries that have the setup infrastructure, the AKs are quite cheap to make. So the points I would say in counter to that would be the infrastructure and the machinery required to make AKs is quite expensive. And then on top of that, you're sourcing many US made parts. And on top of that, you're dealing with very experienced craftsmen and gunsmiths who are building these rifles one by one, test firing them. There's a lot of time and effort that goes into every single one of these rifles. And they're very serious about making sure that every single one of these rifles can be counted on should your life depend on it. And that is absolutely true of this rifle. I have beat the literal dog crap out of this thing. Um, not literal, I, I beat the crap out of this thing. I have put to date in excess of 6,000 rounds through this particular build. Um, a little bit over that probably, there's a couple um, 
you know, shoots I'm not counting in there, but it's seen a lot of rounds on a very rough firing schedule. So this thing has run very well. So I understand that a lot of people are hesitant, hesitant to pay that much for an AK or they gawk at the price. I would counter with for a AK built as well with as well of made parts and with the craftsmanship and the customer service that backs these rifles and pistols, I don't think it's that abnormal. Of course, you are paying a premium for that type of stuff, as with any other premium company that makes you know, premium firearms. Again, it depends on what you're comfortable paying. If you're the type of guy who's a do-it-yourself guy, this probably isn't the gun for you, right? Build yourself an AK. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the last AK match was won by a guy who built his own AK, and he crushed it. So you can absolutely make an AK just as good, right, if you know what you're doing. But for those of us who don't know what we're doing or don't have the machinery to do it and want a really exceptionally well-built AK, Rifle Dynamics definitely falls within there. So with those things out of the way, let's talk about this particular pistol, its setup, and its components. So we're going to do what we normally do. We're going to go tip to butt, just like the Navy does. So I use a dead air muzzle brake because I wanted to, one, use dead air cans. And I have, I'll have a whole video on suppressing the AK and doing all that kind of stuff. And on top of that, I find their muzzle brakes to be very, very effective. So uh, this thing really helps tame the recoil. And it should be noted that this gun is in 7.62 by 3.9. So a little bit more significant of a caliber compared to 5.56. And speaking of that, the dead air muzzle brake really, along with many other uh, factors when it comes into the rifle dynamics AR, really helps tame the 762 while not being overly obnoxious. Uh, people don't hate me when I'm shooting this next to them. It's a very well thought out muzzle device and it really keeps the weapon on um, just on target. When you're firing, it's just the bolt carrier just moving back and forth and I can track the optic through the entire rise and fall because there's so little with this particular build. It's pretty much like Rifle Dynamics, uh, you know, hopped on Alexa and was like, Alexa, turn off AK recoil. And here we have this rifle right here. And there's other things that play into that as well, but I've been very impressed with the combination of everything together. So muzzle brake right there um, is great. I know I typically don't run muzzle brakes, but in this case, I found it to be very effective. Um, especially because if I'm going to be shooting at night, I'm going to be using a suppressor, so it works great. Now, moving back from there, we have our barrel. So this is an 11 and a half inch barrel that gives acceptable ballistics from the 7.62 by 3.9. Not amazing, obviously a 16 inch barrel is going to perform way better. Now these barrels are nitrided. I've had really good experiences with nitrided barrels. You can opt for a cold hammer forge barrel if you'd like. Um, with a little bit of hit on the accuracy platform. Now, as far as accuracy goes on this particular build, I've been very, very impressed. Um, there's always somebody out there who says AKs are not accurate weapons. Uh, you can't hit anything with them. That's absolutely not true. Um, here's just like a sample 50-yard uh, grouping that I shot, and that's pretty typical of the rifle dynamics shooting, you know, Red Army standard, whatever, 7.62 by 3.9 cringe ammo is. So I've been very impressed with the accuracy. Now, I do want to say that a well-built AR in the same kind of price point is going to be more accurate. But I would say as far as AKs goes, this is definitely among the best out there. Now moving from there, we have the uh, front sight base gas block right here, right? So it's a combination front sight post gas block. That's not so uncommon nowadays as it was when they first started doing it, especially on a shorty gun like this, it's pretty common. But on their longer rifle builds, having this particular setup really helps bring the weight balance back on the AK, which really helps with the balance. AKs are a little bit imbalanced when you have that front sight post all the way out on the end. So I'm very appreciative of when they do that on their rifle builds. And we'll have a couple videos um, up here coming up here in the future on their rifle builds. So it really helps balance the rifle. Now on the shorty, it feels a lot like any other short AK. Um, with the exception that Rifle Dynamics also offers an adjustable um, gas system on these gas blocks. That really helps you tune and fine tune this, the ammunition, suppressors, all that type of stuff. So it's a really good design.
Now, before we kind of move on, let's talk a little bit about 7.62 by 3.9. If you're not familiar with it, it is a heavier, much heavier projectile than the 5.56, often compared to the 5.56, though they kind of fall into different categories, even though they're both utilized on assault rifles. Now, before you psychopaths jump on me again, assault rifle is a term. Assault weapon, however, is a made up uh, political term. But assault rifle is a military term for an automatic uh, rifle in a Intermediate caliber, not a battle rifle, you know, caliber uh, that fires an automatic. So, f off with your bullshit. Anyhow, um, when it comes to, you know, 7.62, it definitely has a much more capability as far as penetrating through cover due to the weight and a lot of other factors that come um, with it. So, as far as performing ballistically, it doesn't do great um, with just an FMJ round. With modern loadings, it does very well. So the 7.62 by 3.9 is absolutely a good caliber choice for a variety of purposes. A lot of people use 7.62 by 3.9 to hunt a lot of animals, hogs especially, um, you know, the classic using an SKS or something like that. So the round definitely has its merits and I'm a big fan of it. And what's really cool is despite all that extra, you know, oomph I'm getting from the 7.62 from 3.9, I'm not really getting any more felt recoil due to how well they balance the system. That comes to how well They've um, fit the bolt carrier system, how smooth the action spring is, how well the, how smooth the piston is, how good the gas setting is. Everything just flows together to make for a very smooth recoiling system that will still power through adverse conditions, mud, water, gook, whatever, that makes kind of gives it that legendary kind of AK reliability. Speaking of AK reliability, I shot about 700 rounds through this thing um, on a pretty consistent schedule in about uh, you know maybe 30 or so minutes. So the gun got pretty hot, threw it in the water right here to cool it off. And um, the AK is pretty hot right now, so we need to cool it off. So we're just gonna go ahead. It's an AK, it's gonna work. As you can tell, I mean, it's not like a huge test. Most guns can do this, but just proving the point that AKs just run. I've dragged, dragged this thing through the mud, all that kind of stuff. They are very capable. Let's talk a little bit, kind of get into the setup of this particular weapon. So up top right here, we have an Ultimac rail. That's pretty common with um, the AKs that you're getting from Rifle Dynamics. As you can see right here, I have an optic mounted right here. It's a US optic. Um, just one of their smaller red dots right there. I have my pressure pad from my mod light right there. All right, so the Ultimate gas rail is very sturdy. It has held a very good zero. Um, I haven't had any problems with that. So gas block mounts are good. However, they do get very hot. And because of that, that might be an issue for an optic, especially if you're using a cheaper optic. I was worried about the US Optics um, mini red dot. I haven't had any trouble yet, but a lot of people opt to use like an aim point uh, micro or something like that on there. Now, moving from there, we have our handguard. So the handguard I'm using right here is from SLR. So it is very well built, it's M-Lock. Um, it's everything I could have ever asked for and wanted from an AK. It's precisely um, what I was looking for. So you can get this or a more traditional handguard or a variety of other things when you order your rifle through Rifle Dynamics. I just chose the SLR because I really like the way it looks and feels, and it really improves the ergonomics of this particular rifle. So right here on an Arasaka mount, I have a mod light, which is a just phenomenal weapon light, extremely bright. Um, very happy the performance on these particular lights, especially when it comes to uh, non-Picatinny um, lights like, you know, the Eclat Defensive and stuff. All right, moving back from there, we have our rear sight. So the rear sight has kind of gained a little bit of notoriety coming from Jim Fuller. This is the Fuller version two. So it's radius at the outside corners and it kind of and it's widened a little bit and if you're using iron sights, it really draws your eye in to that front sight post. They did a very good job there, very well made. Um, no complaints there. Obviously, I'm not using it, I'm using an optic. I prefer optics if I can use them. I find them to be superior, but, but that being said, um, it's great to just have a great pair of irons on this weapon should I need to use them. As far as the receiver is concerned, they are using a Morrissey steel stamped receiver among the best of the AK you know, manufactured stamp steel receivers out there. Um, no complaints there. Now, on this side, you can opt to have an optic rail mounted, and if I were to go back, I would likely do that just to make my life a little bit easier. Optic mounting in AKs 
is it's kind of a pain. It's either you know the gas tube or the optic rail uh, that would be right here on the side. You can of course get some updated versions of the top rails right here from like TWS and that type of stuff like the dog leg rail. Um, as far as our ability to hold zero, I can't say yet. I will be testing those products in the future. Until then, we'll kind of hold off on um, on me giving you any kind of uh, you know. Uh, verdict on that particular product. But yeah, I would definitely do an optic rail on the side just so I can get one of the really screwed uh, low optic mounts. I think those are a really good design, help move the weight of the optic further back. and also gives you a variety of other mounting solutions. So just let that be said. Okay, safeties. So safeties on AKs are a big deal to me. Uh, they can be too loose or too tight. My first AK that I ever got was an Arsenal and um, it was like a 104 clone. And it was utter hell. The safety was so freaking tight that I could hardly, I had to put like both hands and like punch into it to push it past. Even Marines were having trouble with it. So it was a real problem. So what Rifle Dynamics does is they precisely fit their safeties with their actions on the entire rifle. So it's a, um, it requires a little bit of effort, but it is very smooth and very easy to actuate. So I'm very appreciative of the fact that they took some time into that. Now, they do offer the Krebs safeties, enhanced safeties as well. I would likely recommend one of those. I don't have it on this particular rifle, but I find that to be much more intuitive. It includes a little ledge right here that makes it easier to actuate the safety because the safety on AKs is less than ideal in my opinion. Now the triggers. So the triggers on uh, AKs are already okay. They're definitely acceptable in my opinion. Uh, they are using a G2 tuned trigger group. Um, they have it around a 4.5 or so pound break. I find them to be pretty good. Uh, a lot of people who have been using these have kind of been a little irked that they don't use the ALG triggers. I think that the ALG triggers are probably a little bit superior. That being said, I've had no issues with the uh, G2 triggers that they use in these builds. So as is our custom, ladies and gentlemen, and my F-16s, let's go ahead and let's go to trigger and let's see kind of where we're at. So, weapon's clear, All right, or I'll put a hole in my ceiling, we'll find out. You never know. Don't want to jinx myself. All right, so we have a little bit of our two stage. That's light. Okay, so we have a little bit of spring right here. Not a defined kind of wall. It's definitely more of a mush kind of going into there. Kind of a crisp mush. Kind of like a slightly old apple. All right, let's feel the reset. Short and very positive. That's a very great click, letting you know when the rifle's ready to, ready to fire again. Hit that trigger one more time. So we have about two centimeters of travel. We hit that wall and it kind of just slides along that wall and breaks into the trigger break. I'm actually really do like the trigger on this particular AK. I think that they did a very good job. Um, no complaints when it comes to it. Um, you know, AKs are interesting. Um, I'm, I'm not quite as fast with, with an AK as I am with an AR. Obviously, that comes, you know, probably due to the fact that I shoot ARs a lot more. But um, there's something, too, that comes down to it. The AKs, when they fire, they're very interesting. It's kind of like a long, kind of soft recoil uh, impulse that I need to come up with better words to describe things. But uh, that's what we're going to stick with. So... They feel slower when they recoil compared to like an M4. An M4 feels very short, very violent typically. Um, the AK, you can feel that entire system kind of driving back and going forward. And because of that, it kind of allows that system to slow itself down. So they're very comfortable and very uh, intuitive to fire. But um, I find that because of kind of that that sluggish kind of feeling you get when you're firing it really fast, that I tend to slow down on my trigger finger. When in reality, I really don't need to. The cyclic rate of these AKs are you know, much higher than I could possibly ever pull my trigger, you know, trigger finger just as fast. So um, I need to be consciously kind of aware of that. And that's probably just due to the fact that I haven't fired AKs nearly as much as I have ARs. It's definitely something to get used to, but I find it very pleasant, and very uh, pleasurable to shoot. So, you know, I, I love this gun. Uh, right, it has these uh, crazy, you know, Elysium slash Escape from Tarkov kind of uh, vibes to it. I really love this design. This is a rifle I'd be very comfortable with taking with me 
um, backpacking deep into the woods or um, you know boogaloo time or whatever you guys are calling it nowadays um, this thing is just gonna run no matter what kind of wood I throw at it so very impressed with these rifles moving to the grip we have a tango down grip happy with it it's a little bit more of an angle than I'd prefer but um, it kind of works on this AK so um, you know no complaints there they can switch it out to whatever possible grip you could uh, want this is the RD M4 buffer adapter right here so this with a B5 stock or most other M4 stocks will put your cheek at the correct height to witness straight through the iron sights you know it doesn't put it at a weird height now with this particular optic it's sitting a little higher than my iron sights so it's more of a kind of a, a 193 height but with a typical um, optic rail or a very low mount, you're gonna get almost an absolute, almost, maybe a little bit closer to a one third. And what I mean to say with that is that it's very comfortable to shoot. These particular adapters have a slight cant to that to, uh, to kind of account for cheeks, different cheek sizes and that type of thing. So if you see it and you're like, what the hell? It's, there's a purpose to it and it actually works quite well when you start shooting with it um, fast and start using this quite a bit. So I'm um, very appreciative of the design and the thoughts that they put into it. They are properly staked and everything like that. I've had no problems with this backing off. Now, a couple notes about the AK kind of going into it is that AKs get hot really fast. So if you notice in all my shooting videos, I'm wearing a glove. So for my Marines out there, you know, no glove, no love. So you definitely need to have at least one glove to get the love from the AK. Otherwise, you're going to burn your hand because these things do heat up very quickly. So little, little, little tips and tricks. For those of you who've been firing AKs for a while, you're like, I know. Or deal with it. Or you burn your hand and you can't feel anything in your hand which case, you know, it's got to deal with it at that point. As far as what they come with, um, this is one of the uh, good old waffle mags, I'm hungry. The Rifle Dynamics AKs come with one mag, kind of a bit of a bummer, just one. Uh, this one has a nice kind of OD green color. That was the color of my AK when I got it. I ended up painting this thing over that, um, and it's been painted a couple times, and it's caked with mud, and so it's kind of a different color now. But that is the general color. It all matches. It looks great. There are different color options. Obviously, if you're going to run an AK, you got to use a Bakelite mag because that's just the way the world works. Uh, one final thing with the AKs, if you're not used to um, loading the AK, they're very interesting. So you have this little lip right here, and you have to get that lip, make sure it's indexed correctly, and you have to rock that thing in. What's cool about these is compared to like ARs, you know, where you can kind of falsely get that thing locked in, and it's going to pop out when you shoot that first round, you look stupid. Doesn't so much happen with AKs. When you get this thing locked in, it is good to go. Now you can get do weird things where you like lock it in weird and just pop that thing right off. But just be aware that reloading on the AK is definitely a little bit more challenging than the AR. So that is kind of one of the issues with the AK compared to other systems. Is there's a lot more involvement in doing a reload. And for a lot of people, it's like a manual arms thing, right? It's something that they strive to um, perfect and everything like that. And it's definitely fun to do so, but despite all that, it is definitely, in my opinion, slower overall compared to an AR. Um, once you get that magazine in, there is no bolt hold open on AKs, so you have to reach under or over, depending on what you want. I typically reach under and charge the weapon uh, to get it going. Uh, one final note here, I do have the... Um, the BCM CAG right here, the kinesthetic angled grip that was made by my dad. So that allows me to kind of get a good grip on this gun and uh, make sure that I'm controlling it when I'm firing it. But it's not really needed. This gun recoils very lightly and I'm sure Tony Cowden is very disappointed in me with the fact that I'm using a uh, grip of any type on this particular firearm. In any case, guys, as cool as this thing looks and as much as I love it, and I really do love this AK, you're not gonna look cool if you don't know what you're doing. So make sure you get training. Without training, none of this matters. So get out there, get training from Bear Solutions, Cogworks, Haley Strategic, who is definitely not my dad, Tony Cowden, um, Pat McNamara, tons of different people out there. I haven't even named half of them. I know you guys are gonna come at me with more. Darcy, Direct Action Resource Center, um, Esoteric. Get out there, check those guys out, get training. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, stay looking cool. And I've got nothing else for you. Final thing I have for you guys is accepting criticism. Um, I've seen a lot of people unable to take criticism. No one is perfect. Uh, you know, far from me, I'm definitely nowhere close to being perfect. Neither of you. No one is. And the kind of point I want to make with that is, if the cons if, 
constructive criticism. If the criticism is constructive and if they're coming to help you and offer a little bit of uh, you know, pointers or something like that, take the criticism and make yourself better. Don't be the type of person that is unteachable because you're never going to improve yourself. A lot of times it's hard to be critical of yourself so an outsider looking in can see a lot of things that you can't. Allow yourself to be teachable, allow yourself to be trainable and get better. And that doesn't just go with you know sports and shooting, it goes for the whole variety of things, maybe even the way you act. So be teachable, be kind. We need more of that in the world. Thank you guys. Take care.